Hello everyone and welcome back to part 55 of Build HMS Victory. So anyway, as you can see, I've got a uh, HMS Victory still on the table and I've just finished off all the uh, forecastle timber heads. I'll just zoom in a little bit closer so you can have a good look at this now. Okay, so now I've got all these timber heads finished, it's now time to start working on the beakhead bulkhead. And one of the first things I need to do is obviously start to make the round houses. So one of the first things I've done, I've kind of printed out a couple of pictures. I've uh, printed out a, a reference picture off the internet. And also I've printed out uh, the plan from the uh, anatomy of Nelson ship. And they're just good reference guides to work to. I've also got the, uh, the, the magazine. This is working for Mission 55, but I want to be roughly using this as a guide. I've pretty much just been working from these two reference pictures. So anyway, I'm going to make a start. Okay, so if you work into the magazine, it pretty much has you cut this round out just slightly below the capping of the forecastle. But obviously looking at the picture, it, it steps, it drops down around about, it, it probably to this scale, around about three mil down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use this as a template and I'm actually gonna make mine to this so I can have this separation between the round outs and the top of all the like decorative mouldings. The trouble is now it's going to make the decorative columns a little bit too well it's too too high in any case so all it means is what i would want to fit these columns i'm just going to cut off around about three mil off the bottom and then i'll bring that down so one of, just one of the first things to do now is just get this dowel cutting off <laughs> Just cutting this dial in half and then just choosing the best side. And I'm going to cut two lengths, They're 22 mil long. Oh, my God. 
So now on the, uh, the roundhouse, they want us to increase the size. They want us to use a, a two by five and then wrap it around the roundhouse. So what I've done, I've just taken some of the two by five and I've chamfered both edges. So when we wrap it around the, uh, the roundhouse, they'll uh, join up a lot nicer. Just cut these slightly over length. I'll just trim them all back after. Just get the first piece on. The second piece, and I'm just going to square them up by eye. Okay, so I'll just let these three centre pieces dry up first before I add these next two. First, three planks are dry, so now we can just add these last two. And just having these lines of separation between these planks just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So, yeah, I quite like this. Okay, that can be left to dry and then obviously be sanded back. So now all the cappings on the roundhouses are now dry. We can turn it upside down and just cut off this excess. So now the roundhouse is about a good good sand, I'm just going to run over a tack cloth. Just get up some of this loose sawdust. And now they're going to be taken back over to Victory. So I'm just going to line up the roundhouse on that position that we made when we first started the video. As you can see, it doesn't sit flush because of this, this top trim. So I need to just give this little mark. I just need to cut out about two, two mil corner. And I'll have to do the same on this side as well. And all I'll do is I'll put that into the miter saw and just cut down that two mil. So after cutting that down, that little slot, it now fits nice over that section. So all we need to do now is just add a nice little, I'll see, single piece roof. So for all this, we're just going to take a piece of 10 by 2 put the roundhouse on, and I'm just going to trace. I'm just going to trace around it. Glue that on and then sand it smooth. And then when that's dry, 
I'll just sand it nice and flush. To sand in the, the roof sections around now so I can bring them back on and just test fit them. Yeah, they're gonna fit all right. Okay, so what I want to do now, I want to, I want to kind of get these columns clear in my head of position because I think they're gonna line up, hopefully, they should line up directly in line with the timber heads. Just gonna apply this a little bit of masking tape. Should be okay just to try it. So I just put these on around the uh, masking tape and then they just fall straight back off. That half circle it should be pretty much ten now. Sorry about my hand. Let's adjust it a little more slightly because I want it to where uh, this one's going to run directly in the middle of the bowsprit. So it's that six. So yeah, one more. Yeah, quite happy with them. They're gonna they're gonna line up quite nice. All line up in position. So I just added the uh, the arch castings that came with the kit, and like I say, none of them's gonna line up with these columns right as the uh, follow the timber heads. So I may have to make all new ones these little arches and it's a bit disappointing in any case because you, you'd only get like one left hand and to make it the right hand you have to turn it over and then you're just going to get the flat casting side so you know it's quite poor so I think I'm going to make my own 
and then I can kind of get these columns to line up true and I'll be a lot happier. Obviously more work, but you know what I mean? That's victory all over for you. And also, as you can tell, these arches are all running higher than the uh, round houses. So I need to reduce every one of the columns around about three mil, four mil to bring them all down. Because above this arch, then we're gonna fit like a top trim. So, but anyway, that'll be in the next video.